Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live here. Just a little quick update tonight, guys, on our news broadcast exclusive. Reuters is reporting Obama aides expected to weigh uh, Syria military options on Friday. It's going to be a, a whole uh, group of meetings that are happening this weekend. The, of course, the military option here that's going to be discussed on Friday with the, uh, the Obama administration with the aides. Today's press briefing here uh, with Mark, Mark Toner, who's the deputy uh, spokesman for uh, the Department of State, uh, stated here uh, about the meetings that's going on in both in Lassange uh, in France, as well as uh, President, or excuse me, Secretary of State John Kerry will be meeting in on Sunday, that's kind of an odd day to be meeting, but meeting on Sunday uh, with the, uh, well, we don't know who it is because uh, Mark doesn't say who they're actually going to be meeting with, uh, but Mark does speak about that uh, there will be a representative from France as well as Great Britain meeting there over the Syrian situation on Sunday. So I am assuming that however the meeting goes there on, on Friday with the President of the United States and his aides there is going to reflect on what happens on Sunday there uh, with the talks there with whoever ends up being in it. Uh, they're, not, they're not saying as of yet. In fact, uh, John Kirby yesterday, another uh, State Department spokesman, was reluctant to say who was actually going to be at this meeting. Uh, and as far as uh, Lassange in France, France, they're not even saying who's going to be at those there. They've kind of kept that hush-hush. Don't know why, but everybody's pressing them for it, and nobody really seems to get an answer out of that. Uh, and another thing that's interesting, too, True News has this same photo here of President Obama on October the 9th coming out of his uh, helicopter there speaking about this, but in their title, they put on there Obama uh, expected to, his aides are to meeting over World War III. That just shows the different aspects of looking at this because probably more so because of this one particular uh, spokesperson of, who, who spoke, uh, of, excuse me, said one official who spoke on the condition of a, a nominee uh, over the deliberations that are going to be held on Friday. He said one set of options includes direct U.S. military action such as airstrikes on Syrian military bases, munitions depots, or radar and anti-aircraft bases. Um, we know that if this were to happen, that will directly get Russia involved because Russia is the one with the radar systems, the S-300, S-400, and Russia is also there to protect President Bashar al-Assad. And I've always wondered how this would end up playing out if Russia gets involved in, or if, yeah, if the United States goes to attacking Syria directly, as they did, but claimed it was an apology. At this point now, any attacks on the Syrian military, there won't be any more apologies at that point. And I think Russia would respond, as we saw the intel center that uh, Russia hit with cruise missiles. Uh, that happened there uh, right there on the outskirts of Aleppo. So uh, besides that, let me kind of share another thing with you that I thought was very interesting. Actually, two things I want to share with you here. One here is a, uh, this was put out by RT, and I want you to be able to hear uh, what the translator says here that President Putin says. He actually tells you who struck the aid convoy. Let me go ahead and get the volume up here so you can hear it, because I know the volume, for some reason, has been kind of low here. So let's listen to what President Putin says about the aid convoy and who struck it and who knows about it. Russia is now being blamed in all crimes without any proof. Let's just take, for example, the attack on the humanitarian aid convoy. We know who hit it. It was one of the terror organizations on the ground. And we clearly know that the Americans are aware of this as well. But they prefer blaming Russia without proof. That's clearly not what can help the situation. This manner of acting at an international level is called pressuring and blackmailing. But with Russia, that has never worked and never will work. No, it will not. It never will work. And that's where the danger is uh, for uh, any, any type of operations that would be happening there in Syria. And they know this. I know also there was another uh, news article that came out. Of course, it's an old news article there. I think it's back from June where the Canadians were saying that Russia is retooling, preparing for a, uh, a major conflict. Uh, of course, they were looking at that being here in Europe. Uh, but it is the, the situation is very, is very tense, without a doubt there. And uh, one other one I wanted to share with you, and this is uh, Vanessa Bealey uh, also put out another of the white helmets. We hear so much about the white helmets on the news uh, in America, but what a lot of people are not aware of about the white helmets, uh, unless you just really start to educate the public, and that is that the white helmets are 
really not a good group. They, they're supposedly uh, civil volunteers helping to rescue people. And Vanessa ran across a yet another photo. And I know what Vanessa is doing. She's looking at all the photographs that are coming out. The white helmets are involved in there uh, in the rescue operations. And yet again, this lady right here is the same lady right here. As Vanessa points out on the article right here, she says, because the white helmets ran out of crisis actors, well, you know what it is. Keep looking at camera. All right. In other words, look at the same person here is the same person here, this heavy set woman. Well, I would say, and, and I know it's a little humorous to say this, but if I, I were the uh, white helmets, I would choose a little bit smaller woman. The guy here does seem to be struggling quite a bit carrying his crisis actor, uh, but she's done very well so far in it. And I'm sure the United States makes sure she's paid well as all the mercenaries that are working to fight against Bashar al-Assad. Um, and again, one thing, as we stated earlier today, I'll just say this in closing. I think it's important to say as far as the Israeli government, I know that there have been actions where Prime Minister Netanyahu has felt that it was important to target the Syrian army for shelling that has fallen over into the Golan. But I think it would be good for the, for the, uh, the Israeli government to remember the covenant, the covenant that was actually reached with the Syrian Laban. Laban uh, being the, uh, the father or the father-in-law of Israel, our, the very man who our nation is named after, who we are all descendant of as a Jewish people. But the Syrian people, Rachel, whom Jacob loved and married, as well as Leah, he ended up marrying Leah as well. Both of these women were Syrians. And if you remember, at Gilad, uh, they made a pile of stones. Uh, and they swore, made a covenant. Israel and Syria made a covenant never to cross this pile of stones to do the other harm. I think that as far as the Israeli government, we should take a true stand for the covenant that was made by our forefather Israel. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Well, good morning, not good evening. It's morning here, 2 o'clock in the morning. Shalom.